All right, so good morning again, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. And today we're gonna to be talking about insulin and the role of insulin in weight loss. And the title today is Insulin the Enemy. So my name is Dr. Ali Barwani. for those of you who haven't met me yet. And a little bit about me, I'm a double board certified family medicine and obesity medicine physician. I'm also the founder and owner of Albedaya Wellness, a boutique virtual weight loss practice. And our goal at Albedaya is to help people who are struggling with overweight and obesity to lose weight and regain their health. So today's, in today's topic, we're gonna cover what is insulin, what does ins, how does inf, insulin affect me day to day? How does insulin affect my weight loss journey? And what, what now, what's next? So what is insulin? That's the first question. And I'd love if you would go ahead and put in the chat box, what's the first thing that you think about when you think about insulin? Don't censor it, just pop in what, you know, write, write whatever pops into your head when you hear the word insulin. Diabetes, exactly. So anything else? Does anyone think of anything else? I feel like diabetes is the common answer. Sugar. Exactly. Exactly. And so that's exactly right. That's the common answer that I get is that it's related to diabetes, sugar as well, but primarily diabetes is what I hear a lot. And so for a lot of people, they equate insulin with the disease state like diabetes, right? And it's really interesting to me to see that because insulin's actually, you know, if we take a, a step back and look at the bigger picture, we know that insulin is involved in our day-to-day, -day, uh, for all of us in our, in our day-to-day -day, um, just metabolism, right? And so it's something that naturally and normally occurs. So not only in disease states is it a part of that, it's also part of our everyday. And in general, insulin plays a role in our glucose um, balance in our body. When we eat a meal, what happens is it gets broken down into blood sugar, particularly carbohydrates in our meal get broken down into blood sugar or glucose. And insulin in turn is responsible for taking that blood sugar or glucose from our bloodstream to where it's needed, either into our cells or our muscles where it's used for energy or whatever is excess to be stored in our liver or our muscles. Now, there are other roles that insulin play as well, or other organs that it affects, and all of this is part of keeping that homeostasis or that balance of blood sugar in our body. Other roles that insulin play is with respect to lipid accumulation or fat storage. It also plays a role in decreasing, so it increases your fat storage. It decreases lipolysis, which is the breakdown of fat. It increases inflammation and it can increase hunger. So bottom line, when we have elevated levels of insulin, we see increased fat storage, decreased fat breakdown, we see increased hunger, and we have insulin resistance. Now, insulin resistance is this term that you've probably heard being thrown around. It's like this sexy new thing that everyone's talking about now. So what is insulin resistance? And I, the way that, it, that I like to describe it is, as I, as I just said, when we eat a meal, insulin is released into our body and insulin allows this blood sugar to go from our bloodstream into the cells or into storage, basically to take it out of the bloodstream. When we have a lot of, uh, over time, right? So this happens usually over time or with uh, chronically elevated levels of insulin, our body no longer responds to the insulin, to insulin as efficiently. So whereas before you maybe just needed a little bit of insulin to get that blood glucose into your cells, over time as you develop insulin resistance, it's no longer doing this. So in this cartoon here, you have this little guy, insulin, begging the cells to let the blood sugar in, but the cell's like, no, we're not doing that because now you're gonna need more and more insulin to come up to the cell to make that happen. And so I think about it as insulin fatigue, right? So it's just not as if insulin is just not as efficient as doing its job because of high levels. 
Uh, another example I got from a colleague for how she describes this to her clients is think about a mom that's always yelling, right? So if you want to get your kids to do things, sometimes moms yell. And if you're the type of mom that doesn't yell often, when you do, it's effective, right? Your kids are going to jump to attention and do what they need to do. But if you're the type of mom that's always yelling, then over time, your kids are you're going to be like, you know, whatever. It's like background noise. And so you're going to have to get louder and louder in order to get your kids to pay attention. So this is the same kind of idea here. So what are some of the symptoms of insulin resistance? There are many different symptoms. And here are just a few. You have excessive hunger or craving, uh, excessive thirst, frequent urination, fatigue, weight changes, and this darkening of the skin, particularly in the groin, armpits, and behind the neck. The medical term is acanthosis nigricans, and that's what that is, is that darkening in these specific areas. Now, a lot of people do believe that insulin resistance is really on the pathway to diabetes. So a lot of the times what happens is that if we can catch people in this phase, we can prevent diabetes from occurring for a lot of patients. And so that's why it's really important to identify and, um, and to, to treat or manage it, okay? So now that you have a clearer picture of the role of insulin, I'm gonna ask you what you guys think. So is insulin the enemy? And it's there's no right or wrong answer, but I, I'm interested to hear, like, do you still feel like insulin is the enemy? All right, people are are shy to say anything. I my I'll, I'll share my my feeling about it. I I feel like insulin is not the enemy. I think with everything, um, you know, moderation is key, and the same is with insulin. Right? When we have appropriate levels of insulin in our body, it does what we need it to do, which is to get our blood sugar where it needs to go. But when we have too much of it, is when we start to see some disease states like insulin resistance, uh, diabetes, etc. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. So what can we do about it, right? Or what can you do about it if you suspect that you may have insulin resistance, uh, either in yourself or a loved one? Number one, I want you to talk to your doctor or your healthcare professional. So that's the first thing. I don't want people doing uh, you know, things that may be unsafe in their home or in the, you know, without getting medical supervision. Now, the next thing that you know that you can do, let's say you've already been diagnosed or your doctor has told you you're pre-diabetic or that you do have insulin resistance, um, what can you do? So the first thing I'm going to recommend is really looking at your nutrition and what you're eating, because as I, as I said in the beginning, really insulin is released in response to what we're eating and how much we're eating, right? So if we can address that, that'll affect things down the line. So you want to look at eating things, foods that are whole grain versus refined grains. So think uh, brown rice or whole grain rice, whole grain cereals, etc., versus refined grains. These have a lower glycemic index, which means that they're going to um, elicit a lower insulin level. Essentially, you're not going to have these high peaks of insulin being released when you have whole grains versus refined. Second, you want to look at eating a high fiber, uh, eating a high fiber diet and moderate to high protein. So there's a bit of a debate when it comes to protein because you have the keto people who are fans of keto and then you have found people who are like keto is crazy. So I say moderate to high protein because protein is really, really important in making sure and helping to stabilize your blood sugar as well as fiber. So eating foods when you do have sugar, trying to balance it with fiber, trying to balance it with protein, those things definitely make a difference as far as, again, eliciting that response from insulin, okay? Next, reducing snacking. It's been shown that, and if you think about it too, if you're eating throughout the day, right? If you're a frequent snacker, and I used to be one of those people, what happens is, again, each time you eat, you have insulin kind of going up, right? So if you're from you know 8 a.m. to 8 or 9 p.m. at night, you're just eating throughout the day every couple of hours, you're, you're essentially, your insulin level is gonna to continue to remain high for those 12 hours a day. And that's a long time and do that you know multiple days a week, that's a long time for your insulin to be at a high level. And so all of the things that cascade that we went over, that's happening, right? So reducing snacking helps to allow periods when your insulin level does drop so that you don't have all of that other stuff that we talked about. 
The other thing is restricting eating periods. And so this is also um, known as intermittent fasting, another sexy term in the weight loss world. And essentially what you're doing is that instead of eating from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., you um, cut down the hours. So maybe your first meal is not until noon and your last meal is maybe at six or seven o'clock. And so you're, you're limiting the time of the day when your insulin levels are high. So let's say even if you were to snack within that time period or to have um, several meals within that time period, you're again, just limiting the amount of time. So instead of an eight hour window uh, that you're, excuse me, a 12 hour window that you're now having your insulin at uh, high levels, you're restricting it to six to eight hours, for example. So that can also help with insulin resistance. And I have a whole video about intermittent fasting, actually, that's part of the video course that I uh, teach and have on my web website at albidiawellness.com that goes into the different forms of intermittent fasting and um, what's permitted and all of those things are permitted, what we recommend rather. Um, the other thing is regular exercise. So different studies have shown and the minimum recommendation currently, and this is always being revised, um, is at least 150 minutes per week of uh, moderate intensity exercise. And so that helps to mobilize the blood sugar, right? So if you think about it, insulin is released in response to that blood glucose, right? So if you're exercising, you're, you're, you're causing that blood sugar to be burned so that you're actually being able to pull that out of the bloodstream. So insulin is not, have you don't have to have as high of an insulin uh, response because you don't have as much blood sugar um, running around. So exercise is another thing that can really help with that. And lastly, medications. There are many medications, as we talked about in the beginning, where you can have uh, add insulin to your regimen, which honestly, when it comes to weight loss, it's not really the uh, ideal situation because as we said, increased insulin leads to weight gain. So we really recommend other medications. And I'm going to refrain from mentioning specific names for medication just because i don't want people walking <laughs> up going to their doctors and saying hey i need you to write me a prescription for x y and z but talk to your doctor about if you do have insulin resistance about what are some of the things that you can be on because there are medications that we can give patients to prevent the onset of diabetes when they're in this insulin resistance phase but also medications that help to address obesity because there's this complex interplay between insulin and obesity as well. It's a kind of a chicken and egg phenomenon where we don't know for sure if insulin resistance is what causes their obesity or obesity causes insulin resistance, but we have found that treating obesity can help to improve insulin resistance. So that's something definitely to talk to your doctor about. And if you um, definitely want a consultation with my, me, um, send me a message on uh, or email through albedietwellness.com or through our social media page on Instagram, and I'll be happy to go through that with you. That being said, that is the end of the presentation. Short and sweet, I wanted to make sure I hit all the important points and allow time for questions. So I will stop this now and give, if you guys have, a have any questions to ask, please put it in the chat and I'll be happy to address it.